we have Gustav Hanger Gram, CEO of Filma Pharma with us. Nice to have you here. Thank you. And the company develops a tablet for obesity and diabetes with a, with a new approach, you can say. And you recently dropped your Q2 report. We're going to talk about some highlights during the quarter as well. Yes, I mean, we, uh, we released our, our, our uh, half-year report, uh, which is uh, consistent with what we had anticipated. We have a relatively low burn rate, which is uh, consistent with the previous half-year report that we released. Uh, indicative, of course, that we have a very uh, prudent uh, relationship to the money that we have in our bank. We don't take on too many uh, costs uh, in order to, of course, make sure that we have uh, a very uh, good cost base uh, to operate from. So, um, so all in all, uh, what can we say? We can say that it's uh, lean operations, and uh, of course, uh, it goes without saying that since uh, the the reporting period, we have also um, we have also uh, conducted a, a rights issue that was uh, very nicely overwritten. So, um, so the bank account is now uh, replenished uh, for um, for the next future projects. Yeah, and as you mentioned there, the the rights issue there, it was. Uh, Pretty impressive, over, oversubscribed by almost 300%. Uh, why do you think it draws such a strong interest from investors? I think that's because of the area that we operate in. I mean, I think obesity as a, as a topic among investors are, are very much uh, still a thing. I think it's it's obvious to everyone that this is a mega trend that is coming to stay. Uh, we see that uh, the code has been cracked when it comes to the bigger weight loss. And now the hunt is on for scalable solutions that can really address the, the market uh, volume. Um, so I think uh, uh, investors, both uh, of course here in Scandinavia, but, but equally so abroad, have, have taken notice of that. Uh, we've seen really nice participation across the line from existing investors, of course, but also new investors. And they have all given the nod uh, for us to, to raise this money in order to assess how our drug uh, performs in, uh, in sort of pure obesity models. So we're looking to understand how it works um, in, in obesity. Uh, previously, we've conducted trials in, uh, in overweight people with diabetes, which is, is, is somewhat different. Uh, so this will be the first uh, pure obesity studies that we will be conducting. So very exciting. And I mean, you mentioned in the report here, uh, the plan to demonstrate the proof of concept both in animal models and in human with obesity. Do you have a timeline for this, uh, for the initiating these studies? Yes. So, of course, uh, simultaneous to, uh, to, to conducting the rights issue, we have been trying to prepare as much as we could. And we have, uh, we have of course, set some things in motion. We're looking to hopefully soon communicate that we uh, are engaging in top tier uh, CRO, which is a, a, a clinical research organization that we will work with to, to ensure that these uh, studies, first in, in what we call in vivo models, so in rats, uh, will be conducted to the highest possible quality. Uh, that will be set in motion as soon as possible. Uh, that sort of works in the way that rats will have to be on a high fat diet for <laughs> some time. You, of course, want to make sure you can showcase that they lose weight. Um, so that, that's the process. And, and we hope that we will have results from this study uh, around New Year already. So um, in, in a relatively short amount of time. And subsequently, of course, uh, we're hopeful that the, the results show uh, that it, uh, it works as, uh, as well as we are both hoping and anticipating so we can move into uh, to clinical trials. A, a pretty big milestone for, for investors to, to look, look for. Uh, potentially, yes. Yeah. I mean, it would be the first of its kind with this type of drug. Uh, so the drug class we work with, TRPV1 inhibition, is, is very much uh, on, it's not commonly associated with uh, treatment of obesity. So it would be uh, what we call a first-in-class uh, treatment, potentially, yes. Talking about the uh, TRP1, what difference is from other obesity treatments in the market right now? Could you give us some more? Yeah, so of course nowadays uh, it, many investors and many people around the world have been uh, have been acquainted with these GLP-1 treatments that are, are, are on the market currently, uh, which are very affected, uh, eff effective in the, in the way that they uh, mimic these uh, gut hormones. Um, our molecule and our drug and the pathway that we target is, is very much different. Uh, the target TRPV1 is located on uh, sensory afferent nerves throughout the body and our organs and is very much known in terms of regulating pain but also inflammation. And inflammation of course plays a huge part uh, when you have uh, excess uh, body fat. So we believe this could be a potential alternative to uh, GLP-1 treatments where it's also very common that you have a lot of side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, constipation, etc. Um, and we anticipate that, of course, with this, um, this different target, 
uh, you could change the, um, the side effect profile and thus perhaps also improve uh, the adherence for, uh, for patients. And, and we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the, a new approach. And it appears like the more uh, market gravitates to oral solution. What's your take on that? For sure. That's the, that's the direction. Uh, I mean, I think uh, many people uh, would prefer not to take uh, uh, an injectable solution if they could avoid it. Um, that being said, of course, the injectable solutions are really good for those that really need it. But again, it, it goes without saying that with a billion people in the world that are obese and more than four billion people that are overweight, there's a, a really tremendously large uh, issue going on on a global basis, which will need to be addressed somehow. And the only way you can address this is with a scalable uh, solution, so a tablet. Um, so we, we do see development uh, both from, uh, from the biggest pharmaceutical companies as well as from a lot of, of other players. Uh, now um, we see that GLP-1s, which are currently in, in injectable formats, are also now being redeveloped as, as uh, oral uh, formulations. Um, we don't think that they are necessarily so scalable as R could be. So we're hopeful that uh, at least uh, the solution that we come forward with would, uh, would be attractive uh, if we can showcase good safety and, of course, uh, good efficacy. Yeah, yeah, I think it sounds like oral solutions would, uh, would uh, decrease the resistance from potential customers as well. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's also a lot of talk now around whether uh, it should be uh, patient-centric or customer-centric, right? So we're seeing a transition now where the market is also slowly building towards more of a customer-based relationship. So there's a lot of people, of course, who are taking weight loss drugs for more cosmetic purposes. So that's also a way that investors can, can view this industry that is not just for medical purposes anymore, but it could potentially be more of a consumer-based industry. Uh, that's, of course, beyond uh, my expertise to talk so much about. But, but again, these are some of the trends that we see. And it's very interesting in, in the way that that, that this type of, of, of industry has, has really shaped around. Because, I mean, it's not more than five years ago, really, that, that obesity wasn't really uh, with any marketed products. And in the, in the CEO comment, you referred to, to it as a bet on obesity. I think it's a very clever saying. Uh, but <laughs> could you elaborate on how this strategic shift all affects the long-term development for the diabetes indication? I mean, we, we, we saw some, 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 uh, some changes, I would say, in the dynamics in our talks with, with bigger pharmaceutical companies during the spring. Um, we met with quite a few of them uh, at a conference in, in March. And they all came to us and said that they thought it was super interesting, also because of the, the diversification away from GLP-1 and because it was oral. So uh, we saw an opportunity to potentially, um, to potentially get closer to our goal of achieving a partnership uh, or an acquisition if we were able to produce uh, more pure, pure, more so, like how can we say, pure obesity results. Yeah. Um, so that is what we came back with to the board and to our big investors. And um, they largely uh, agreed and thought it was a good plan. Um, so that's why we call it a bet on obesity, because of course we don't have any uh, weight loss data with our molecule so far. So it is somewhat of a bet, but we do have uh, very high expectations. Sounds good. And I think to wrap it up a bit here, what, what are the top priorities for Phila Pharma in the coming 6 to 12 months? So, of course, it goes without saying that right here and now we're wishing to, to commence these uh, rat studies that we have proposed. So that we're working very hard on and hopefully we can communicate something very soon. And subsequently, of course, we will be, uh, we will be engaging our big pharma uh, contacts again to say this is the plan. This is what we have in mind. This is how we're going to do it. These are the timelines that we're looking at. Uh, as well as, as, as try and educate them a bit more around the target, again, because it's not super common for, for obesity and diabetes medicine. And of course, we're looking forward to having uh, the exercise period of uh, the WARN from the rights issue that is coming through in the middle of, of um, February. <clears throat> and I mean, of course, we hope to have the, the RAT data uh, in place uh, before then, so we can uh, have full exercise of this option. Impending full exercise, uh, we are looking to, to of course, really uh, strengthen the cash position again, which would enable us to run uh, clinical trials in both humans without diabetes, but with obesity, and people living with obesity and diabetes. So two clinical trials uh, at the same time. Thank you so much, Christopher, for joining us here today, and it's going to be a nice to follow your journey. <laughs> Thank you.